going back to Logic Games, it feels really good to see what clicks already and what I haven't had an issue with. And then also seeing like the little things I could really um, emphasize more. But I did write a list just in case of certain questions I had while I still have you here um, that I could kind of go through. Yeah, sure. Uh, Feel free to fire away. Yeah, so um, prior to this, my biggest concern has always been speeding, uh, like the speed of, of the test. I've gone in through each question and um, really felt comfortable with those. And then whenever I moved further, and not now, because um, I'm still going to the day by day for four months, but prior to that, um, I had always felt uncomfortable with the speed. So I felt like if I didn't have the speed, um, I could totally feel comfortable answering the questions and I feel like a lot of people see that as well and I know the speed kind of comes with the accuracy of each um, it's each step along the way so I, I feel comfortable with that it's just um, yeah I just if you could possibly help me in terms of speed if that is the case if I should just keep on going um, just logic game to logic game or maybe incorporate timing into my logic games or maybe that's too soon to do that I, I guess in the back of my head is always the concern of like, I hope this is helping me with speed once I come to like doing time sections. Every improvement in your understanding helps with your speed. Mm -hmm. Speed, as you said, it comes with accuracy. It comes with deeply understanding the questions. Mm -hmm. So speed for your know, accuracy first, deep understanding first, deep review. Then mm -hmm. you add in individual timed sections to help you work on your pacing. Then yeah. finally, you bring it to full length timed exams. But if you're just starting off and you're getting the basics of logic games, then I would start untimed. So let me ask okay. you this with regard to where you're at. Are you yeah. working through the beginning of the schedule, building the foundation? Is that where you are? Yeah, so um, I've already gone through, um, so in my schedule, I'm on week three and I'm going into group grouping logic games. But prior to that, um, I've always felt really comfortable with sequencing. Um, it's always kind of like everyone's kind of bread and butter, I think, whenever you start um, the LSAT. So I felt really comfortable answering those uh, questions that you, uh, kind of were assigned. So those games I felt very comfortable with. I could like fly by through those. And then even checking the answers and making sure that my mindset was kind of the same way of um, the explanations were. Just to make sure it wasn't like a fluke that I was coming to this answer. I knew which ones were wrong and why they were wrong. And that's coming quicker and I feel that speed. So I, I feel good with that. Um, as far as grouping, I've found that that's kind of where like I, I, I can see that I had an understanding of it, but not a real fully immersed understanding. Like certain questions, certain games I could feel really comfortable with, but if they moved certain variables around that made it seem unfamiliar to me, then it was really hard for me to acknowledge that, oh, this is a grouping game now. So I'm seeing like the finer, kind of the finer pieces of that. So I'm really trying to catch my errors, you know. Um, I'm hoping that's the best method for that as well. That sounds good to me. It sounds like there's still work to do in games to be done on time to build that foundation. So keep mm -hmm. doing that and trust the process. And within a week or so, you'll be through the end of the foundational portion and then you'll start doing timed sections. So it'll be here before you know it. Okay, okay. And I think that's the thing too, um, because I've, I have had um, this process of learning the LSAT. So I've used different um, preps before. So everyone has their own foundations. And I, I really like your method of kind of like trying to figure out what works for you and then um, using that to your best method. Um, so I'm really trying to do that as well. Um, but I think that's also where it kind of conflicts where I I know different methods and I'm like trying to narrow down which one works the quickest and best for me. Um, but I have found that uh, I am seeing um, like letters and, and, and names as variables now and very quickly to um, do a sketch of, of how that goes. So I'm really just trying to conquer the logic games right now. Um, prior to that, I've noticed that like, uh, or at least prior to the day-to-day -day four months, I, I know that I've felt comfortable with logic games and I've felt comfortable with logical reasoning. It, my, my biggest concern has always been reading comp and I think that goes more for timing like a lot of people might have. Um, and I know that's down the road with 
with as far as the day to day goes. So I get, I guess I'm, I'm always just kind of thinking of what I've had issues with before and preparing for that to come and, and how to conquer that as well. Um, let's see what else I had as a question. Um, yeah, so I, I, um, when should I be incorporating timing into logic games? Should I be waiting until after I go through all the foundations of each? Um, yeah, so the way the study, plan, the way the study yeah. plan works is that you build that foundation, you do work untimed, then you introduce pacing with individual sections. So okay. once you've gone through each of the types of logic games untimed to okay. do them by type, once you pull that all together and you've completed that portion, then immediately I'll have you doing timed sections as you're building the foundation in logical reasoning. So okay. if you're already in grouping games, you're probably just a week or two away from introducing timed sections there. So it'll be oh, there okay, pretty soon. Awesome. Um, let's see. Yeah, and then going through that, I know that different sections are gonna come up. Um, how do I stay confident in my skills in say logic games as I move to logical reasoning and then and then to reading comp? Um, I'm sure maybe the, the study schedule says more in detail, but like, how do I stay consistent in all those realms without feeling like maybe once I go into logical reasoning, um, I'll start forgetting a little bit more selection games or, and. I guess there's more of a concern there that I, I, I might um, kind of drop. I hear that. I, yeah. I hear that. Yeah, it's a common concern. And the thing is that you, the way you avoid getting rusty is by continuing to cycle it in and not letting any long period go by without touching a certain section type. So the way I avoid this in my study plans is I have you constantly mixing in the sections you've focused on previously. So once you move into the logical reasoning portion of the schedule, you're focusing on logical reasoning, but not exclusively doing logical reasoning. So you still have logic games from the prior weeks being mixed back in. So I'll have you doing a timed games section or two, even during a logical reasoning focused week, because you have already built the foundation in games. Mm -hmm. Now let's work on timed games, even while you're doing untimed logical reasoning. And then once you move into time, untimed reading comp to build the foundation there, you're still mixing in timed games and timed reasoning as well. So you're never letting too long go by. Okay, great. Um, and the other thing too is that, you know, I, I mentioned before, but um, my schedule is really wide open and um, I, I do, and I have been going just doing the day by day um, and in the schedule, which kind of adds up to about like four hours each morning. Um, but since I do have a lot more time and I could kind of make this more into a, like a full-time study session, um, what would you recommend for, if I'm trying to get like the best score possible, how many hours should I be, if I have this amount of time, taking towards studying um, per day or like per week? What would be a good round for that? You could probably do as much as five to six hours per day of focused okay. studying. Yeah. without burning out. Of course, okay. different people are different. Some can handle more than others. Yeah. But if your schedules and days are is fairly open, then mm -hmm. I think it's good to do five to six hours a day if possible, meaning two and a half hours before lunch, two and a half hours after lunch, and then you're done. That could be okay. it. With breaks yeah. within that two and a half hour period, of course, that could be one way to do it. And that still allows you to maintain healthy balance with life, sleep, diet, exercise, yeah. relaxation, all of that. Okay, great. Yeah, I think there's always like this, um, like after I study, there's always this guilt of like, maybe I should be doing more. Maybe there's another way I could do more of this. So um, it's good to hear like a, a certain, a good mix of certain hours that would be a good area to focus on. Um, there is one more thing I want to add on this, which is yeah. that my study plans are built on the assumption that you're studying part-time, not full-time, because many yeah. people do have work and school and other obligations mm -hmm. and such. And so- what I would suggest for you then is that you take the schedule more as for the level of specificity it contains about what to do than the particular day-by-day -day breakdown. So you can work ahead and build a buffer for later where towards the end, maybe you'll do more full-length timed exams mm -hmm. than what I suggest. And an alternative would be that I send you a, a longer plan. So let's say, what, which plan are you on right now? I'm on the four-month plan right now. So, um, and that's for a test in October. 
Okay. So uh, I yeah. could send you the six month plan and you okay. work, it has more work than the four month plan does. Mm -hmm. And you won't follow it on the day by day basis, but you could just work through it in the order given. It has more assignments with more timed sections and you okay. could do more t questions of each type. So after this call, I'll send you that too. So you can take a look and see if that That's fits great. your needs yeah. better. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I think that'd be great. I think that's kind of where I kind of fall because I'll, I'll study and then I'm like, I don't know, like I still have this time and, and maybe I could be doing more to, to get there because um, I'm really trying to work my way through it. Um, the other thing too is kind of slightly off topic, but um, as far as the writing sample goes, so far my, my focus has been on the LSAT and kind of getting the score I want before I kind of move more through the application process and obviously the writing sample as well. Um, is that the best method or should, should I be um, on my off time also considering the writing sample or when to take that? Um, and also like applications and personal statements, is that something I should be working in throughout this time as well? Yeah, since you're taking the LSAT in October and that's what you're aiming for, ideally you want to be able to submit your application once you get that score back. So you'll have okay. two to three weeks after the LSAT test date to wait for your score. During that time, you can finalize your application, but okay. I wouldn't save everything to the last minute. You have, mm -hmm. at this point, speaking in end of June, you have all summer. So yeah. when you want to take a break from the LSAT or if there's a day where you have a bit more time than otherwise, fit in some time for the LSAT there too, for the application there too. Take a break from okay. LSAT content here and there. LSAT's okay. most important, but it's never too early to start working on your personal statement and getting letters or letters of rec together and all that. And then okay, I would do the writing sample during those two to three weeks after you take after the that. actual LSAT. Okay, great. And I wouldn't worry too much about that because it's unscored. Schools look at it a bit more than previously because it's typed and they can read what people write, but mm -hmm. it's still not nearly as important as the scored LSAT or even all the other parts of the application. Okay, great. Um, I think that's, that might be about it um, just because I'm still kind of working early on with this day-to-day the -day schedule. Um, but if I have any other additional questions, I'll definitely email you um, as much as possible. Um, as far as books, I have, um, I've done like the, the Kaplan at LSAT prep program. So I have their booklets. I also have LSAT trainer. And then with Kaplan, um, they gave, they had given me access to a lot of the past prep tests. So I kind of like downloaded all the PDFs of those with the explanations and I've been working with those as well. Um, and then I also have the LSAC plus. So just to take tests as well. Um, was there anything else you think that might work with this? I mean, I've read those, I've looked through those. I really think your day-to-day -day schedule um, works really well just because I have those prep tests already. So it's really easy to access those. Um, anything that you think that uh, that should be incorporated? I already also have your your fact sheets which come in handle as well. Um, so I'm really trying to collect as much as possible, but, um, and I've gone through most of the material as well. So. I feel like the basic understanding of the LSATs there, I feel like more of my issue now is just working through it. So it comes as comfortable with me as possible by test day, that's like not a problem. Um, but any recommendations there? No, it sounds like really you've got everything you need. If, as long yeah. as you have the exams and you've also got the study plan in the course, that's, that's really more than enough. So just keep working through those, do those exams, review the questions that give you difficulty okay. and keep at it. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. Um, I don't want to pass your timing, but uh, if I have any additional questions, I'll make sure to email you. And I really do appreciate the, the six month um, study plan too. That'll give me some more things to add in on there. Yeah, of course. I'll send it over. So keep in touch, reach out if you need anything and I'll see you in class. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.